Off the Line Motorsports here with my new 12 valve VR6 uh, Volkswagen motor, 2.8 liter V6 single cylinder head. Um, these are a big power motor that people can throw quite a bit of boost at out of the factory, um, like head studs and uh, things like that. So, this is what is actually going to go into my E30. Um, as far as I know, nobody has completed one of these yet. There's kind of a lot of work that has to uh, go into it. Um, I'm going to be converting this motor to a dry sump. So I already stripped the motor down fairly well. Um, took off the oil pump that's driven off of this intermediate shaft where a distributor would normally go. There's a um, gear that would go down and turn the oil pump. Uh, that's gotten taken out. I'm going to have to block off the holes for that. Um, I need to figure out where I am going to feed the motor from, which I believe I have already figured out. I believe I'm going to take off the oil filter housing, put a remote filter in, and I should be able to tap into this. It would be my main feed line. I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of dark back here, but this would be my main feed galley. And once I take this off, the oil filter housing, I should be able to determine what hole goes to that and uh, feed into there. Have a remote oil filter as well as a oil cooler somewhere. Get rid of this uh, oil cooler that runs off of the engine's coolant. And yeah, the issue is... Here, hold on, let me set this down. So I don't know how much you guys know about the VR6 or really the E30 in general. The motor that's in there right now sits about an inch and a half from the pan to the cross member. Uh, so, or the subframe. So that's basically two inches from the motor's bottom plane. To where the cross member is which means the oil pan in that motor is very narrow until you get to the front of the engine and then it's got a big deep sump um, the issue with the vr6 is i've got this giant oil pump right here that you can see it's huge you know it sticks up about six inches off of this plane um, and the cross member goes about right here so as far as I can tell, without completely modifying this oil pump in hopes that it may fit, I would have to take off this whole top plate, uh, weld my own little section and just get everything as tight as I can, bring the pickup down to over here where I'd have a deep sump. Uh, that may work, but I figure it's going to be easier, probably a bit more expensive. Uh, dry sump systems are not cheap. Um, so there's that. I may end up doing a remote uh, oil pump, which is basically a dry sump oil pump, but you keep the wet sump oil pan. Well, not this oil pan because it has to be modified to fit, but you would make another um, wet sump oil pan that basically your sump would be in the very front of the engine. You know, it'd have like a big box here and then it'd come down and basically just clear the crank and the rods. And uh, and then I would just put my pickup down into the bottom of that and get the pump out of the way. So the pump would be outside of there. I'd have lines going into there. And the issue with that is that you don't get any of the benefits that you do going dry sump. Um, Dry sump, basically, if you're bringing the car on the track, if you're doing a lots of winding roads and turning, there's a possibility with a stock oil pump and a stock oil pan without any windage trays that your oil is going to slosh around and your pump's not going to be able to pick it up. So it's going to be trying to push air through the motor instead of oil, which is not good. <laughs> um, you can spin bearings that way. I mean, you could ruin an engine that way. So. So yeah, I'm kind of leaning more towards the dry sump system. We will see. It's relatively the same amount of work. So 
I have got to plug this hole. This shaft sat in, and that's what spun and drove the oil pump. This is the stock oil pressure inlet. Goes up. I don't know if you can barely see it. You can kind of see this galley right here. And then it goes into this galley, which goes over out into the oil filter. And then it goes back through the oil filter and feeds the rest of the engine. Pretty straightforward stuff. Yeah, this whole um, oil filter housing is it's gonna disappear completely and I'm gonna have AN lines running out of the block right there. Um, yeah, so that's the update. I just kind of came here on a Sunday just to kind of wrap my head around what's going on and uh, what I can actually do to make this dry sump system work. So, oh, yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, it's gonna be a lot of learning for me and I hope you guys follow along and can learn something as well. But yeah, uh, feel free to follow the page, um, subscribe if you like it and uh, watch me keep moving forward with this project.